Welcome Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and guys, this is my new 2023 Harley-Davidson CVO Street Glide. Straight off the showroom floor, took me a while to get in, had to special order it. Beautiful, beautiful American touring machine. Unfortunately, Harley-Davidson is breaking my back. This suspension is killing me. Unlike this beautiful Ducati X Diavel S, the Harley Davidson came from the factory with the zero preload setting on the rear right shock. That's the one you have to set the nut. And of course the hydraulic uh, adjuster was set down as well. This thing came preset. I had to fine tune it just a little bit with a little bit of uh, rebound. Oh my gosh. But the Harley Davidson, we're gonna set that today. I'm gonna show you how and it's really easy. The only tool we're gonna need is this handy dandy spanner wrench that came with the CVO Street Glide. It's uh, part number 149-00148, and you can see it's just a little metal uh, spanner wrench. It's gonna get around that locking ring and adjusting ring to adjust that spring tightness just right for your rider weight, again, pack weight and passenger weight. We're gonna get these side bags off. I'm gonna show you how to do that safely without scratching them up. First thing you want to do, open up your side bag. I've got my uh, interior bags removed already. You've got these locking bolts. They already have the handles on them. You're going to twist those and go all the way out with them. There is a electrical connector that's going to be just on the inside. I'll show you how to get that off. It's a quick, quick, quick disconnect. Again, you want to support these side bags, these saddle bags. You don't want these uh, getting scratched, especially on your CBO color matched. I'm, I'm supporting it very, very gently. Got this one all the way out. Got this one all the way out. And you can see this electrical connector right there. Squeeze the connector, pops right off. Lift your saddlebag out of place. First thing we're gonna notice on our right shock is the preload adjusting rings are all the way to the top. The dealer did not preset these for me and I'm, I guarantee most of your dealers are not doing it either, even though it's probably a checkbox on the customer delivery sheet. Uh, the factory has them all the way released so there's the least amount of spring tension. We have to adjust this. I was out on the road and every bump I would hit, I would bottom out, compress these, this shock completely and I, I need to check, make sure I didn't have any welds break because when I had a passion on here, I would adjust the hydraulic preload manual adjuster all the way up. We'll get into more into that in a little bit, but I would adjust it all the way up and we would bottom out as well. And you talk about not making a passenger happy when they're sitting up on this little pillion up here and they bottom out and this thing, metal to metal, not good. Again, I need to make sure there's no cracks. But So the locking ring at the top here, normally it would be down here and you would uh, counterclockwise loosen it up and then you could adjust your adjusting ring. But because they've got it all the way up, I can't loosen this anymore. So what I'm gonna have to do is tighten the adjuster ring. This is the gin, just the first time you're doing it. I gotta tighten the adjuster ring. I'm just gonna get my spanner wrench set right on there. And then I'm just gonna start cranking it in the clockwise direction. I'm sure you're asking yourself, Tim, how do I know how much to adjust it and what do I compare it to? So what you're looking at is that top locking ring all the way up. You always put it all the way up and then you start adjusting your adjusting ring down. Now you're going to measure the distance between the two rings, the inner, the inner diameter, the inner distance between the two rings until it matches up with a chart in your user's manual for your weight and passenger weight and pack weight or, or uh, luggage weight, whatever you're going to use. You'll you look at that chart and uh, you'll find out how many millimeters you need to have between those two rings. I'm going to use this gauge right here to measure the distance between the rings as I extend them out. Um, you don't have to use this. You can use a ruler if you want. It's 25 millimeters to inch, 25.4 millimeters to inch. Um, I looked at the chart and found out what I need. Now I'm going to use my weight and I ride with a passenger about half the time and I don't want to have to be adjusting this all the time. So I'm going to add 100 pounds for the passenger and then I can uh, do the rest of it with the uh, manual hydraulic preload adjust knob on the other side. So for the passenger weight uh, plus, you know, uh, with the 100 I already had added to it, plus any other luggage or pack we have. Now, I'm not going to have the pack on it initially, so uh, if you add a pack to it, you have to add 15 millimeters of distance for the pack. So whatever your weight is, the passenger, the luggage, all that, plus 15 millimeters for the pack. I'm not doing the pack right now. I'll come back and do that once I get the backrest for my pack. Be another video for that soon. So what I'm going to do is start adjusting the adjuster ring down until I get to 30 millimeters. That's, the, that's the, what I'm going to be using for my set point. So I'm going to adjust this down to 30 millimeters. It should be pretty simple. Again, all you got to do is start going uh, clockwise on the adjuster ring. Get it lined up right in there. 
clockwise, adjust down. Again, I'm gonna go about 30 millimeters, so that's well over an inch. They do have these yellow lines here. There's one on the lock ring, there's one on the adjuster ring, and that can you can count the number of turns you do. Of course, I'm doing it by distance, like the manual said. So, but if you wanted to tell somebody I did five turns, 10 turns from you know wherever, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go down again till I get about an inch or so, then I'm gonna put my gauge on it, see how close I am, and do the fine adjustments. Again, I want it 30 millimeters distance. I can't believe Harley shipped this. It, it was seriously, seriously hurting my back. This should be turning very easy for you. Now let's take a measurement, again, 30 millimeters. Not quite. Should go right in between, almost there. I just want it to pass through. Okay, oh, that's so close. All right, that's it right there. It passes through, passes through 30 millimeters. So now all I gotta do is take the lock ring, spin it all the way down, and tighten it against the adjusting ring. Now what's gonna happen when I go to tighten this lock ring on the adjusting ring, it's gonna start moving the adjusting ring like I just did there. So what I'm gonna do is go back on it, keep tightening, go back and forth until it tightens. That's tight, and those two yellow dots lined up. I don't know how if that's just a coincidence or not. That's locked in place. The left shock over here does not have the adjusting rings. You just have the, the knob, the manual hydraulic knob to adjust preload. And I'll get into that again here in just a second. What we do have on both sides is the rebound adjust. Now it's a little harder for you to see. I'll have to get the camera a little bit lower. There's an orange dial at the very bottom of each shock, left and right. And you're gonna look at the chart again in your manual and you're gonna see for your weight and uh, luggage, how many clicks from max, from max positive, that'd be a hard ride, do we need to adjust towards soft, okay? So um, if you're pretty light, you're gonna go more numbers. If you're pretty heavy, you're gonna go fewer numbers from max. Um, I think base for me was seven. I'm gonna add one for uh, uh, weight, uh, luggage and stuff. So I'm gonna go seven clicks from max, seven clicks from max. Right down here at the bottom of the shock, see this orange dial. Now, this direction is soft, there's an S. There's an H going this direction, that is hard, okay? Right now, I have no idea where this thing's set from the factory, so let's go towards hard, we're gonna go all the way towards hard or max. So, wow, okay, one, one click, two clicks, three clicks, four, five, six, seven, eight all right so it was about eight clicks from from uh, uh from max towards soft now i want to go back seven so let's see let's start from here okay okay i'll start start from that base one right there so one two three four five six Seven, all right, so seven clicks from the first click. <laughs> so it may be about me seven and a half. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll play with that a little bit. But uh, so I went seven clicks from where it was clicked the first time towards the max. Now, you, there's one of these on the other side as well. You gotta make sure you do both sides. Again, the shock on the other side has the same rebound adjustment. You don't wanna forget to adjust both sides equally because you don't want your two shocks to uh, be rebounding at different rates. That would not be good. So this one's set. We're gonna go over and adjust that one. I'm not gonna show you it because it's exactly the same as this, but we are gonna talk about the manual preload adjuster. The last adjustment is our manual preload adjust. It's a hydraulic adjustment to your left shock. There's no locking rings over here. We did adjust our rebound. It was set to max soft. I put it all the way to max hard and then back seven. So I matched the two dampers or rebounds. So now we're gonna adjust. Now I've been running since, uh, since this thing was running so soft, I've been running with max preload. And preload all the way max gives you 100 pounds uh, of accountability for your um, weight distribution. So. We can back it all the way out, it's about 40 turns or so. And there's graduations on the behind the dial there. Each one is 20 pounds, so it's one through five. And so like I've got 100 pounds already accounted for for a passenger in my right spring uh, adjust. 
So on the left, I can just add, so one would be, you know, 20, two would be 40, 60, 80, 100. So if I got a 200 pound passenger, I would go all the way up. Or if I had a 140 pound passenger plus luggage, you see how that works. So I'm gonna keep that all the way at soft because I've got 140 pounds of preload on the right side. I got my rebound, both at uh, uh, negative seven off of max. We are good, let's get our bags on and uh, let's go test ride this thing. Now for the exciting part. Did I fix my back problem with my Harley Davidson CBO 2023 Street Glide? I sure hope I did. Let's go find out. Wow, guys, what a huge, huge difference in the uh, rideability of this amazing American cruiser, guys. Oh, my back, <laughs> my back is so much better. Um, it still rides a little stiff. You know, I put, uh, I put that extra 100 pounds of preload in there for the passenger. I'll probably change that to say 40 or so, and then, because I, I still have 100 on the uh, hydraulic knob, so that, that'd be just fine. But super, super excited, man, with how well that rode and how smooth it was. Hope you like the scenery, too, as I was running around there. Um, if you like this kind of video, guys, I'm gonna have tons more of a uh, Harley Davidson CBO Street Glide how-tos and product reviews. I'm also doing all kinds. I've got uh, two e-bikes to do, an electronic scooter, a battery-powered ice chest. Uh, I'm gonna put up a giant uh, uh, canopy, 13 by 20 canopy. So many more uh, product reviews and how-tos here on Ridge Life's reviews and how-tos. So if you haven't subscribed, please take the time to do so now. Hit that notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out on Ridge Life's reviews and how-tos. So until next time, hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life.